Hey everyone, welcome to our live on corporate wellness. Today we're going to go deep into how to decrease stress while increasing productivity, joy, and revenue at the workplace. My name is Luke Linton. I direct corporate wellness programs at work, and I'm joined today by the amazing Siobhan. Siobhan helps organizations develop compassionate, skilled leaders who support engaged and high-performing teams. And we have in common our past experiences in education, helping youth. And I'm so excited to go deeper into corporate wellness with you today, Siobhan. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to everyone watching the live and the replay. Post your questions, comments below, and stay for the end. We have some wellness to offer you in a special. Siobhan, I'd love to just offer you the floor to share more about yourself. Anything else? Absolutely. I am so happy to be here and to be having this conversation with you, Luke. So as you said, my name is Siobhan. I am a leadership coach and trainer with 20 some years of experience helping people be at their best. And I founded my company, which is called Luminous Spark Coaching and Consulting to create high performing cultures that also uplift humanity, which is so needed this day, these days. And I'm glad that we are talking more about that. Absolutely. Yes. And I loved the things that you're bringing up in all of your posts, Siobhan, about the value of being compassionate leaders and caring about your employees, right? Because healthy and happy employees are productive employees that stay with our companies for the long term. And I know in my own experiences, both as an employee and now as wellness director, I have stayed with those with those businesses that really are doing good, not just for their impact and whatever they're doing, whether it's clothing, whether it's fashion or it's living facility, right? But also for the people that are working there. And I just love to hear more about your experience with organizations that work that are doing really great things. Yeah. Um, well, I love that you're bringing up this connection between wellness and productivity, because I think that's really key. And sometimes I hear people debating, like, what's more important? Is it the profits or the business results or is it the people? And I really believe that you have to have both. And there are studies that show that when people are happy at work, they're 20% more productive, which is incredible. It's like an extra day in your work week or an extra practically week in your work month. Um, and so I think we don't always recognize the importance of that positive culture and bringing joy and energy into our work. Um, but where that's happening, it's incredibly powerful. And like you're saying, it leads people to want to bring their best forward, to do great work, and to stay with companies, which helps them sustain awesome results in the long term. So the way that I partner with companies um, varies, but the two my primary things that I focus on are one, training for managers. And I've really honed in on this because... Well, first of all, from personal experience, having worked with a variety of different managers and just feeling firsthand how much of a difference it makes when you feel like your manager cares about you and supports you, has your back um, versus not. But the research bears that out too. Um, so there's all sorts of research on employee engagement, which is basically like the feelings of positivity and connection to the work. And when you look at what drives employee engagement, the number one thing is someone's manager. It actually accounts for 70% of the variance in employee engagement. And so when I think about workplaces that are good for people and good for business, strong managers are like the linchpin of that. And so I partner with organizations to develop leaders and I talk to so many people, leaders and managers who say things like, I don't know what it means to be in this role. I don't know like whether I'm a CEO or whether I'm a first time boss, how to talk to people, like how to relate to people as a CEO or as a manager. And there's so much that we can do to support people to 
grow into that identity, again, whether it's a C-suite leader or a new manager, to feel comfortable showing up as yourself, relating well to people, connecting with them and supporting them to be their best. So um, again, I do trainings that support leaders to be at their best and bring out the best in their people. And then I also work with leaders one-on-one. And oftentimes that's over the course of say six months and it's helping people really explore what's at play for them individually as a leader. I will tell you, I see a ton of burnout these days. Um, Leaders who are like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't know if I can do this anymore. And want to make an impact, want to show up well for their people, but um, need some support to do that. So coaching is hugely powerful for people to really tap into their strengths and um, show up at their best for their company and for their team. I I love what you brought up. Like it starts with those managers and has this trickle down effect, right? Since healthy managers, healthy businesses result in a productive business, right? That's profitable. And I know like Harvard did a study on this in 2014 and there's a 270% return on investment when your company invests in wellness, whether it's consulting with Siobhan, whether it's something else, right? And that results in the decrease in worker absenteeism. You know, I know like in the companies, the companies that I work with, like tomorrow I'm teaching at Viore Clothing. We're doing a leadership team sweat with all the leadership from all those stores. And people want to come to work, right? When they have yes. something to look forward to, like some wellness, some breath work, some stretch, whatever it may be. And I think that's really important, right? So as a leader, especially when you're mindful, you make the best decisions, right? And we're in kind of the most distracted time in human history with yeah. all these tasks and more and more, you know, to-do lists and things of that nature. And I just wanted to go to go deeper into, I know like with COVID things have yeah. kind of been, and actually someone in, before our broadcast commented that with COVID, all of these issues were facing burnout, emp- tr- challenges related to empathy and feeling cared about by your employer, they actually were exacerbated, right? Since now 26.5% of the people listening to this live work remote, right? You're working at home, you're working at a coffee shop. And I'm, I'm curious if that may have contributed to sometimes that lack of connections sometimes between these teams, but now we can do this wellness virtually, right? And I think that's the great thing that I've seen with my clients is like seeing it, w- this morning, I just met with a group of individuals across California for a yoga class, right? And I got to see my own mom and we didn't have to be in the same city even. And so now it's kind of like learning new ways to do wellness from any place, anywhere, and to also just show people that we care about them and authentically connect. Cause we're kind of, sometimes we're losing out on that time at the, where, you know, we'd have those conversations. Like when I worked at the schools at KIPP, where we just talk organically over getting, getting our tea, getting our water in the water room, the lunchroom, what have you. And so I, I know, like you're mentioning like about leadership and like, what are some of the things that, that have you seen been instrumental in, in teams making the big shift in in terms of the work that you do in creating creating leaders that achieve outsized impact like what's worked for some people yeah i i do think that the move to hybrid work and working remotely was a big shift for a lot of people i had been working for national organizations for a long time and was more accustomed to that and what I found, and what I think a lot of people are finding is that it's absolutely doable. And I think it's less about whether you're in person and more about, like you were saying, the underlying orientation toward people and care and investment in them. So I think taking the time which can happen on Zoom, it can happen over the phone, it can happen like in a team retreat where people are coming together in person, even if they're not together most of the year, but taking time to get to know each other as people is huge. And this supports the work because people have different working styles too, like different backgrounds that they're bringing, different perspectives that they're bringing, and they wanna be seen and valued 
for everything that they're bringing to the table. So when I work with managers or when I work with teams, we talk about things like, you know, what's your learning style? Do you like to talk things through? And, um, you know, do you like to make fast decisions? Or do you like to really process internally before sharing what you're thinking and take your time before moving forward? Do you like to work more independently? Do you like to work more collaboratively? And when we know these things about each other, it helps us not make assumptions. Um, and sometimes it's like these aha moments, right? Where someone's thinking, this person doesn't care about my opinion. Like they just make a decision and they move on and I feel excluded where that's that person's working style. But when there can be a conversation about, um, I see that's your working style and I want to be included. Can you slow down a minute so we can, you know, do this together? It builds that understanding that helps people work well together and ultimately get better results. Um, so there's so many things that teams can do to share, like, here's who I am, here's how I work, how, here's how we can best interact with each other that helps facilitate those relationships and awesome work. And again, it can be done remotely. I love that. Like authentic connections I've seen similarly is really key, right? Seeing each other as humans. And so studies show too, like when we hang out with each other after work and we, whether it is a happy hour, whether it is, you know, yoga class, it can be so many different things, or maybe it is a virtual retreat, right? I literally ran a virtual retreat last year. It was fire. And so that really builds trust. And so that's what yeah. really what we need to have in a lot of workplaces to have a healthy workplace that I've seen. And, and of course that creates health, right? When we're healthy, we show, we show up to work and we enjoy doing that great work. And now more than ever, that is important. And I love this post that I saw on your LinkedIn wall the other day. And if you're not following Siobhan, go and follow her on LinkedIn. She has the best content, by the way. And you, and you wrote that according to a Gallup poll, 24% feel that their employer doesn't, or feel only 24% of people feel that their employer cares about them. And I'm curious to know, like, for, for, like, how can we show, how can the leaders out there show their, show that compassion to their staff? Like, I know, like I was mentioning, like, I'm already working with businesses doing the, the wellness sessions and these yeah. great things on a regular basis, but what are some even, even other innovative ideas that you have mm -hmm. to show love on both sides? Um, yeah, this is so fascinating. And one of the things that was so interesting about that research is that it was 24% of employees that felt like their employers cared about their overall well-being. But if you were to ask the CHROs, they they do care. They're saying, yes, you know, as a company, as executives, I think it was something like 60 67%, something like that. Um but there's that disconnect in people feeling the love. So I think as I'm talking with leaders and managers, some of the things that I hear are, I don't want to cross boundaries. Like, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to ask people about their life outside of work or not, actually. Um, there's like this professional distance in some cases where people just really aren't sure what kind of a role they should play in connecting with people in a professional setting. And I like to encourage people to build those relationships and to actually say, like, if you're a leader, if you're a manager, tell the people that you're working with, I want to be the best manager that I can be for you. I would love to support you. And I'm best positioned to do that when I know who you are, I know how you tick, I know what you're going through. And so I want us to be, to be able to have open conversations about that and how I can best support you. And then again, there's less assumptions made when things happen. Like if someone calls in or calls off of work one day, um, the manager can assume like, 
I know that this person cares and they're going through some things at home perhaps, but um, just starting from that place of show personal care because people do want that. Um, and so if you're a leader wondering about, is it appropriate for me to ask what someone did on the weekend, anything like that, you have my permission, you have my blessing um, for what that's worth. And I think it is, you know, again, just building those relationships, um, trusting people. So if someone is looking for flexibility because they're a caretaker and they need to take a sick parent to a medical appointment or their kid is going through a mental health crisis, whatever it may be, saying, yes, absolutely, that matters, that takes priority right now, I support you, what can I do to help? Um, things like that really show the investment. Um, I also wanna shout out one of the companies that I've been partnering with here, um, Proofpoint Marketing. They are incredibly people-centric and relationships-driven. It is part of their DNA. It was part of the founder's vision. The founders are Gabby Israel Greenberg and Mike Greenberg. Shout out to them. Um, but having that orientation toward wanting employees to live whole lives and feel supported. And Gabby and Mike do things like ask their employees all the time, you know, what benefits are most meaningful for you? So they're not investing in things that people don't actually care about. And um, they're being responsive to the needs and desires of their team. Um, so again, if you're not sure what matters to your people, ask them, ask them for input, ask them how you can support them. It means a lot, especially when you're able to um, respond to that feedback. I love that. It's so sometimes it's like, it's just as simple as asking, right? And I know for me personally, like in my, in the way that my business works too, like we do an audit, like we come in and we help with mm -hmm. that asking. So you get that objective person there doing the surveys and really all of the answers are there. So I, I like to think of it in terms of wellness, especially at the workplace, the answers are within, right? It starts with you as a great leader, whatever you're doing, being mindful, taking care of your health and your body, breathe in and exhale, but also with the team, right? Like everyone connecting with each other as one unit, right? Everyone having their back. And I know in the past, it used to be kind of a more more individualistic focus, right? That we've seen it with certain businesses. And now we're shifting into this time of collective responsibility, right? We're in the age, I think of this, I'm in astrology, we're in the age of Aquarius, which is all about the collective, right? And we're really seeing that with the organizations and business that businesses that are thriving, right? There's transparency in everything that you do and how your workers are being treated and how also the products are being made, right? Like, and that, like with one of the companies I work with, Lotus and Luna, they have you know, jewelry made in Thailand by artisans. And the, I literally met their artisans last week at wow. an event we had with staff, right? And it was just so cool to have that mm -hmm. connection and that collective, you know, responsibility to each other, to the people making the jewelry and then to the workers right here in San Diego. And I, I think that's so great when we, when we have those conversations and assess what's going on. And that increases your bottom line since we're seeing now that people are really wanting those socially responsible businesses to thrive, right? Those ones that are taking care of the planet and, and each yeah. other and really care. And, and so um, I love to like, yeah, hear more about your perspective on those, of course, the, the organizations that you have been seeing that are, are crushing it in terms of that communication and, and in terms of the outcomes that you may have seen. I know with the businesses I'm working with, they're the fastest growing businesses out there, right? Mm -hmm. And they're pivoting and we're here to help you pivot with these new times um, to get to better, faster in your business. But any, any trends you've seen as well? Yeah. Um, totally agree with what you're saying about just collaboration and how quickly things move these days. And I think one of the things that's a theme among companies that I work with is wanting to just enable great work through a culture of feedback and a culture of learning. So when I think about what is really different, differentiating companies that are like crushing it with their culture 
and their business results in a sustainable way. It's organizations that are committed to learning and giving feedback and building a positive culture. Um, so with giving feedback, I mean, it's fascinating, right? Like if I'm in a manager training and we're talking about giving feedback and I ask people, how does it feel to give someone feedback or to receive feedback? People will say things like, it's really anxiety producing, it's nerve wracking, it's stressful. And over time in working with a company, as more managers build their confidence and their skills to give feedback, both constructive feedback and positive recognition, people start saying things like, it's so empowering, it's so productive. And so there's so much of like our psychology and the mentality around what we do that matters. And like you're saying, requires transparent conversation. Like this is how we orient here. We're a learning culture and we give each other feedback in service of helping each other grow and be at our best. And when you establish those tenants in your culture and equip people to live them out um, in the day to day, it's incredibly powerful. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I know thinking back on my own experiences, you know, teaching in yoga studios, one of my favorite bosses of all time, Sarah Denton, she would always give me feedback on my class and she would give me the most great positive feedback and then areas of growth. And then of course, the more positive feedback. And the thing is psychologically, like when we are, when we have a positive mindset, a growth mindset, right. And we believe in the ability of our team to perform better, right? And we're not just applauding results, but, you know, hard work. It's shown that people are are going to be more committed, right, to the, the goals of the company, right? And so, like, I just want to applaud Sarah and all the amazing managers out there that are giving feedback, that are creating a trust. And that kind of segues now into, you know, we are going through the great resignation right now. We had, we've had the highest burnout rates in recorded history, according to the American Psychological Association, nearly 40% of workers are burned out, but also the highest rates of people is resigning. And that was at 50.5 million last year. Now we know that something's going on and things need to change. We need to pivot. Just like I saw in the comments before our broadcast, else we aren't going to have any workers left, right? If people keep leaving, right? If we don't shift things for the better, and especially since we're seeing that younger workers are resigning at a higher rate, right? They're not going to be staying and, and they're going to be really going to maybe another position that pays less, but prioritizes wellness, prioritizes mental health, like the great things that Siobhan and I are doing to help companies thrive. And so I'm just curious for, for the, um, for the issues that are facing with the great resignation for the people out there watching this live, whether they're, they are a leader or someone on the team who desires to make that change, but they're like, well, we're going to wait until we're ready, Siobhan. We're going to wait until, and Luke, we're going to, we're not ready yet. We're going to come and do this later down the road. I always think of, of the, the, the analogy of the frog inside of water that's mm -hmm. heating up, right? And typically the frog won't jump out of the water and the frog will die, right? We don't want that to happen. And we want this to be your sign that you don't have to wait until things crash and burn to make that change, right? And so I just wanted, I wanted to reiterate once again, of course, we're here to, here to help you with that pivot, to help you retain the best employees, since we know that you lose between 50 and 75% of that employee's annual salary if they resign, right? So to keep the best, but also attract the best, right? Because as we were just mentioning before, people are okay getting paid less. The majority of people are, are okay getting paid less if mental health is a priority at that workplace, right? If they feel good when they go to work, because we really spend most of our lives at work, right? And so I think that chemistry, that dynamic, like we we're talking about the trust, having wellness as a priority, having leaders that are compassionate, which is, I know, a part of your mission, which I love. So I just love to just, yeah, hear more about um, your, per yeah, your perspective on that, on like building compassionate leaders. I know I mentioned we do an audit when you work with me, mm. we do wellness and all these great things. What, mm -hmm. what um, anything else that's coming up for you with all of this happening? Yeah. Um, first, I'd love to go back to what you were saying about feedback, because 
I think there's this culture in a lot of workplaces that views feedback as constructive. Like it's always what you could do better. And I feel like that is what I was steeped in. Um, Like I think back to early in my career and I felt like when I became a manager, it was my job to like point out everything people were doing wrong so they could do it better. And that feels awful. And I am so like relieved and grateful to have learned that what we actually want to do is focus on people's strengths and what they're doing well. And there's research in this area too um, that shows that you want to, whether it's as a manager, as a life partner, as a parent, give like five positive comments for every constructive comment. Um, really recognize people for what's going well, for the effort that they're making. And that is ideal for building relationships, helping people feel seen and valued, building trust. And it also helps facilitate those more difficult, constructive conversations too, because people are more open to that. If they know that you're coming from a good place, that you, you know, see the positive in them. And so that's one thing that, Um, is really powerful for leaders to do, Um, you know, recognition, celebration, appreciation, and do it for your team and do it for yourself. (laughs) Do it for yourself. Um, And I think with a lot of this, like it starts with us. Um, And a lot of people are, you know, showing up at work and thinking, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, what is the purpose of this? I'm tired, I'm depleted. And when you can say like, that was a great conversation or, you know, we had a win, whatever that win might be, it's energizing. So focusing more on what's working and that positive feedback and recognition is huge. Um, And then, you know, to your question about building compassionate leaders, um, it's, it's a skill that can be learned. I guess that's what I would say. Like when you think about emotional intelligence, I remember hearing that term back in the day and I was like, I don't know what that means. Um, and I reached out to an organizational psychologist and I was like, what, what is this all about? And he told me, you know, it's about self-awareness. So like awareness of who you are, your emotional state, your communication style, all of that self-awareness awareness of others and how you can use that awareness of who you are and who other people are to work well together. So we can build self-awareness. Like there's a lot that can be done for you to become more aware of, you know, what's my working style? Um, What's my communication style? How does that mesh well with other people? How does that get me into trouble? How do I want to adjust? Um, But I think it's just that awareness and that orientation that goes a long way. And also just slowing down a little bit to be thoughtful about things like, um, you know, there's a change that we're putting into practice. Maybe we're restructuring our teams. Maybe someone's going to have a new manager. How do we think they're going to feel about this? And what does that mean for how we can communicate in a way that signals like we care about your experience and we want to support you through this and we care about your opinion. Um, I think, you know, ownership and autonomy is so important too and helping people feel like they're part of the solution. Um, So I think it is again, building that self-awareness and that empathy Um, And I hear from people all the time in the work that I do, like, wow, this is super eye-opening because I was interacting with people according to how I like people to interact with me. And turns out not everybody likes the same things. Um, You know, not everybody wants to get feedback in the same way. Not everybody wants to like talk things through all the time. Some people like to be heads down and puzzle something out. So um, it's that awareness and building those skills that goes a long way. 
Absolutely. It goes a long way and you can change, you can grow an emotional intelligence. I wanted to also reiterate that your personality is not permanent, right? You can really step into a new identity through doing, doing wellness, doing inner work, you know, becoming whatever it is. I know for both of us, we're both yoga teachers too, but I know it can be other things too. So you can step into this new identity as a leader through, through shifting, like these, to making these small, but big changes in yourself and your business. And also I just wanted to reiterate, like it does have that three-dimensional impact, right. And decreased healthcare costs too, when you are, you know, you care about each other that manifests in your health, right? And it manifests in you caring about yourself too, as a leader. Since I think, like, I always think of it in the way, Siobhan, that how you treat yourself is how you treat the world, right? And so I mm -hmm. think sometimes, and I do work one-on-one -on -one with many CEO clients, and, and the reality is that whatever position you have, whether it is CEO or it is someone you know, working as an employee in a business doing your, your art, your craft, Burnout is a real thing if you're not taking care of that self that is you, right? And that can manifest in, you know, different different styles of not, you know, not not as good of communication, not being as mindful in the moment, right? And people can, like you're saying, people can take it different ways, right? It, depending on their their style of communication, depend. And I also I also think of it kind of like love languages, right? It's like yeah. you can express your love, to, your appreciation to your employees and your staff in so many different ways. It can be a comment, but it can also be some you know some sort of gift, right? Or something small like that. The gift of time, the gift of you mm -hmm. know movement, and that's why you know more and more and more businesses, the the ones that are killing it out there, are having having you know. I think back even in my days in education. When I worked for Kip through College San Diego, we'd have Wellness Wednesdays, right? Where one day of the week is focused on you taking care of yourself and the day would end early. We had different mm -hmm. events going on. And really that's becoming like the new norm. That isn't something out of the ordinary. The, all yeah. of the, all of these great companies and businesses are doing things like that in order to, you know, show, show the staff, show the team that you're appreciated and the leaders too, for all the hard hours that you work. And and so, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with you, Siobhan. Like, I think the the work that you're doing is so amazingly great. And and also, like, of course, highly, highly recommend following Siobhan. And is there anything else, like, coming out, coming up for you, for any of the, the people out there watching? Like, if there were, if you could, yeah, and I love asking people this question, but if there were, if you could speak to your former self out there or someone out there who might be struggling with the topics we're talking about in terms of wellness... Yeah. Any advice to that person that may be listening? Oh, I have so much to say about this. And like, I'm a work in progress too. Very much so, you know, in terms of wellness and um, like being mindful of not burning out. I think I spent, I don't know, multiple years like chronically burned out and I didn't have a term for it. I didn't know what I was feeling, but I felt depleted and irritable and cranky. Um, and I got to the point where I just didn't want to feel that way or show up in that way anymore. Like I knew I wasn't at my best. Um, and so I personally hired a coach and that was life changing. Like I never would have anticipated how transformational that was, and I've worked with multiple coaches since. But one of the things that I've learned, and I, you know, would love to tell my former self, <laughs> is um, like honor yourself. And I know I've shared with you, Luke, because we're both yoga teachers. I've been practicing yoga for like 15 years and I was going to yoga for years and they would always announce teacher training, you know, at the end of classes. And I wanted to do it so badly. Like I just wanted to throw myself into it. There was something about it that called to me and I never let myself do it. You know, I had all of these excuses. I'm a parent, I'm working. It would be selfish of me to, you know, take time away from my family and, it was so empowering when I finally said, no, like I'm going to listen to myself. I'm going to listen to my passions and I'm worth it. Like I deserve to be happy and um, energized. And I think we need to lean into the things that energize us because my mentality 
for so long was like, I just need to grind through this, you know, like I might not feel super happy and fulfilled in my job, but I should power through it. And that is exhausting. Um, and so I just want to encourage people to like, listen to yourself, listen to those whispers, listen to what lights you up and follow that. Um, like get in touch with your strengths and your passions um, because those are the things that will energize you. Um, and then support people in doing the same. But I really do think that we need to start with ourselves. Like you were saying, if we are showing up irritable or exhausted, we're not at our best to manage the things that come our way. Um, I have a coach and a mentor who says, like, what you fill your cup with is what will spill out when your cup tips. And like life is going to tip our cup, you know, things happen. Um, but what you have filled yourself up with, what you filled your cup with is what comes out. Um, so make sure, you know, you're filling your cup with energy and um, self-love really, like being willing to honor yourself and how you're feeling and resting when you need to rest and, you know, exercising when you need to exercise. Um, whatever it is that, that fills you up, just being in tune with how you're doing and taking care of yourself. And it, it models it for the people that you work with too. It gives them permission to do the same, um, which really helps us all be at our best. Yes, it, it helps us all be at our best. And I know for me personally, it's a similar journey. Like I've gone through the point of burnout and not making time for my own physical fitness and those things. And it really took me going, going through that to really see the light and see the, not just the importance, but the necessity of self-care, right? It's definitely not selfish. When you take care of yourself, when you take care mm -hmm. of your company, your employees, it's going to result in your success, whatever that, that may be. It all starts with you. And then going back into what you mentioned at the end, Siobhan, like your best self, like like attracts like, right? Especially as a leader, especially as someone who is doing great work at your business, like you will be attracting dream clients, attracting more customers when you yourself are high vibration, right? And so that's that's something we go deeper into, of course, when you work when you work with us. But yeah. it's really all about taking care of your body, your mind. I know I'm so glad that I took a stand for myself. Similarly, Siobhan and I mm -hmm. took a chance on myself and became a yoga teacher, became a personal trainer, and I'm doing what I do now. And I want to mention also, I'm not doing it alone. Right. I have my I have my own coaches. I've had multiple coaches yeah. similar to Siobhan. And I think that first step of taking a taking a chance on myself and reaching out mm -hmm. to a coach I had never met online. I actually watched a live just like this when I signed up to work with my first coach. And I'm so happy that I did, right? Because that really opened my eyes. And the the gorgeous thing about it is that we used to be kind of tied to our geographical location. Mm -hmm. My first coach lived in New York City. Yeah. Right. So I did and I live in San Diego, California. So so I think it's like it's so wonderful that we are able to connect with you now on LinkedIn and like spread this new way of thinking and just have wellness go viral, right? Go viral and go from just being something maybe that you would do at home to something that you could bring to your entire workplace, right? And time says so showing over and over again that that's going to have great, great impacts on you, of course, on your, your self-love, your happiness, but also on the health of your business, on the health of your staff, on keeping the best people and recruiting the best as well. And I wanted to mention also a great thing about it is that it kind of goes hand in hand in the work that I do with kind of marketing your, your product, mm -hmm. marketing mm -hmm. your business. I know I was talking with another client how we'll be, we'll be doing classes that align with the launch of the latest product. And that's like a great way to get things on YouTube, get things on social media, since people nowadays might not necessarily want just that physical item. They want the energy of that item of that experience, right? Whether it is yoga, it's wellness, it's it's workers and leaders that are compassionate, right? So I think that's something yeah. important to, to show to the people that are following your business as you soar, right? 
And so these are all such juicy things to bring up. Yeah, and I think that's a great point, like the impact on employer brand. And that is widespread, um, you know, going back to attracting people to your company, retaining people to your company, attracting customers. Um, I think that's a great point. Yes. And is there anything else you wanted to add, Siobhan, before we go into the wellness portion? Um, I mean, just that this is a super broad topic and people are coming into it in different places. So, um, you know, would love to continue the conversation with folks if there's something about this that's speaking to you. Um, you know, like, like Luke said, you can find me on LinkedIn, would love to continue the conversation and would love to hear more from you about the wellness for sure, Luke. Yes. And I wanted to, yeah, reiterate too, like, let's continue this conversation. Like, let's connect on LinkedIn, what have you. And if you're interested in learning more about what it's like to have a chief wellness officer in your business and, and really increase productivity and decrease stress at the workplace, contact me. I'm offering free 30 minute consultations and I'll be dropping the link in our, in the comments below if you're interested. But before we go in, into that, I just wanted to invite you all to join me in tapping. So tapping is actually shown to help reduce stress and bring you to the moment, improve focus. So if you're ready with me, breathe in and exhale. Perfect. Now start tapping the sides of your hands, one hand and then the other to get that blood flowing. Breathe in. Exhale. Repeat after me. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. Perfect, Siobhan. Now come to your eyebrows. Tap away. This will bring you to the moment. Great. And then to the sides of your eyes, your temples. And then to your cheekbones just beneath your eyes. Wonderful. And then beneath your lips at your chin. Breathe in. Exhale, love and accept myself. Love and accept myself. Now tap your collarbone, the front of your chest. That's how that feels. And then just beneath your arm, about hands width distance, one side, then the other. Perfect. And now the top of your head, the crown of your head. This is where we're going to be ending now. Get it all tapped up to bring you to the moment. Breathe in with me. And exhale. Now hands at heart center, breath in your intention, exhale sigh, mm. relax your hands by your side as you come back to this mindful moment that we have. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And once again, if you're interested in learning more about having a corporate wellness audit and wellness at your business, contact me or Siobhan. We have some amazing resources. We'd love to connect. Anything else you'd love to add, Siobhan? We just want to say thank you for leading the tapping. And I think it's so interesting because what was that like a minute? And it's so calming. And I don't do a ton of tapping personally, but I know there's been research that shows how much it reduces stress hormones. So I'm just thinking about these micro techniques that can make such a big difference, whether it's tapping whether it's like a couple of calming breaths, whether it's standing up and like shaking something out if you feel frustrated, smiling is another one. Even if you're faking it, um, it releases like happy hormones, dopamine. Um, so there are all of these little things that we can do throughout the day when we're aware of it. Um, and that's, I think, where just the power of learning um, and partnering with people who can help you bring these things in. And I will say sometimes working with corporate clients, I wonder like, is this going to seem woo woo? Um, but the reality is like, it works. It's scientifically based and that felt great to tap, you know? So I guess I just want to encourage people too to be open to trying things that maybe you haven't learned before because there's some super powerful and honestly really simple and quick techniques that can make a big difference. 
absolutely so true it's like just with a few minutes this can make a really big difference and i wanted to say too like if you haven't had a sign yet this is your sign to make that change whether it is adding in some tapping or maybe it is connecting with Siobhan and me and taking taking a deep dive into your your self-care your team self-care your businesses in turn the success of your company and the world Thank you all so much for tuning into our live on corporate wellness and drop in the comments below your biggest takeaways. And then also, if you think employee wellness is important, put a one in the comments. I want to see how many ones we can get. Have a great day, everyone, and connect with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Luke. Take care. Thank you, Siobhan. Bye, everyone. Bye.